Hey there, would you like to learn five stonewalling examples and how to stop stonewalling in relationships? Hey, I'm Anki Boyd, co-founder and creator of the Magnetize Your Man Method. And look, this is like a, just a super juicy topic because you have to really understand that you're probably already stonewalling in dating in relationships but you're not even aware of it so let's go ahead and dive right in now stonewalling stonewalling is really defined by the dictionary as a delay or a block to request process by refusing to answer a question or by giving evasive replies and then of course especially applies um in dating and romantic relationships so let's go ahead and dive right in Number one is turning around and looking away. Now, this is really, really important because this really goes sort of like in the passive aggressive category, right? Where you sort of punish the other person and it's really extremely disrespectful and really causes a lot of mistrust in the other person because they don't feel honored and they don't feel seen, they don't feel connected to, and instead you just kind of chop it off this is it, I'm walking the opposite direction. Now, this used to be uh, me, because I learned it from my mom very well, to just like, let's just ignore it. You know what I mean? Let's just walk away, like no problem. Now, let me tell you how you can actually shift it and stop this particular pattern if you show up like that. Now, the biggest piece is really to take a deep breath, right? And so to feel that vulnerability, because when we're turning around and we want to look away, it's really because we want to protect ourselves, because we want to separate. We feel we're safer when we're in our individual self versus when we're connected. Now, what do you do in the opposite? Well, it's actually super, super interesting because it's, it's almost like you want to actually look at the person, right? And you don't have to stay like closer to them but like just don't don't look away. Like maybe you wanna look like just a three quarters, right? Or just like maybe 90 degrees towards them, but, but like maybe make an attempt that you move a little bit your attention towards him. And like at least you're making an attempt, you know, to just like kind of like, okay, or the peripheral vision is like so, and so on and so forth, because it doesn't feel so threatening for you, but yes, it also shows like, okay, like I do want to do something different. I don't exactly know how to do it, but I'm still here. I'm still listening. It's really hard for me, but it's the biggest thing is to actually stay. Example number two is the silent treatment. Now, this is another passive aggressive stonewalling technique. And you know what, like I guarantee you, and that's super true for me too, I'm totally guilty of do, doing that, right? You know, I've done this with men, I've done this with my husband, you know, just really the silent treatment. And whether you just do it for a couple of seconds or you do it for days, you know, the silent treatment really indicates you're sort of like in a battle, right? And your partner is the enemy and you, again, you have to punish him, you know, you have to teach him. And it's kind of like, we're holding out, the strongest one wins. But what happens in the meanwhile is, again, a lot of trust is being broken, right? So like his inner boy, I always talk about the six masculine and the six feminine archetypes. The inner boy is really losing a lot of trust and it's going to have a hard time to keep his heart open, right? Instead of giving the silent treatment, do something different, you know, ask him for a time out. Say, you know what, like, I just feel like the, what you just said really impacted me in such a way that I need a break, right? I will be back in one hour. I will be back in two hours. Like, make this man feel safe and make yourself feel safe as well. So ask for the distance, but don't do it just like nonchalantly, silent treatment, right? And like withdrawal, because this is the worst and it's actually a predictor for divorce, for breakups, as you can imagine, because the other person doesn't feel safe with you anymore because they know, well, it's, it's a sabotage, you know, it's like a manipulation, you know, you're manipulating him into acting a certain way. And so the trust is dwindling quickly. Example number three is physically leaving the room. You know, that's just really, I'm out of here for 
forget about it. This goes back to the separation piece, right? Like, you know, I'm out of here, you know, and it's like really about like, you're not worth, like, I'm not going to deal with that, right? And we see that sometimes in reality TV shows, a particular episode comes to mind right now where she could just not hold the conversation. But look, there is actually hope. And I'm telling you, I'm giving you actually an example from my own life. So look, when my husband and I were living together for not that long of a time, I would say, like maybe like a few months, um, we had like sort of an argument, if you will. And oftentimes I was actually starting that because we had so much harmony and my nervous system was not used to that much harmony. So it's kind of like picking almost fights, if you will, right? And arguments, I was like, there's got to be something wrong with this guy right and so you may relate to that as well and that's by the way ladies how we do sabotage and uh, you know just really destroy all of what we have all the goodness because there's this underlying story that we're not good enough now let's get back to physically leaving the room so i had an argument and i was just already holding like the door in my hand i was already on my way out right but then something inside of me said no, like don't do that because what happens is when you leave the room, you have to disconnect from a part inside of yourself. So in short, you're going to create a parts conflict inside of yourself because there's this part that actually wants to have the deep connected relationship with him and wants to actually be embraced, wants to be understood, wants to be supported. And then there's this other part that's like, no, I don't need that. Forget about it. Let, screw it. Right? Like I'm out of here. And so the problem is you have to cut off your heart and that warm and loving and connecting part in order to leave. So I understood that in that particular moment. So what did I do? Okay, I did something really crazy. And I tell you what my internal dialogue said when I did that. You know, I was like, I was turning around, looked at him and he's like, um, what's going to happen, right? He was kind of wondering. And I just like really, really slowly walked towards him. And it was really interesting because with every walk, I took a breath like, oh, okay. And my brain was, of course, saying, are you crazy? You're giving all your power away. You know, you're going to be taken advantage of. Don't do that, right? So I just kept walking very slowly for me to feel safe. And then when I reached him, all I wanted was just an embrace, a hug. And we just hugged. And then I cried. And I guarantee you, four out of five times when you do this, you actually, your inner girl wants to have that same experience. She wants to be loved. She wants to be hugged. She wants to be taken care of. She doesn't want to leave the room. She doesn't want to separate. She doesn't want to be alone. That's not true. So keep that in mind next time when you want to leave the room. Example number four is refusing to answer or to talk about the issue at hand. Now, this is like really, this is like really, you know, you're kind of like progressing a little bit into the little girl, right? Like, I'm not going to answer you, you know, like, you, like, why, why would I say anything? I'm not going to say anything, you know, like, whatever you want me to say, what, well, say something. I'm not going to say anything, right? So you're like literally pushing him away and again, punishing through lack of communication. So all of what I mentioned so far is really like removing yourself from the situation, withdrawing, disconnecting, and honestly, truly starting to abandon your partner. And what I'm saying is like really making sure that you make sure you talk about the issue. Don't minimize it. Don't distort it. It's not that important anyways. Forget about it. I don't really care anyways. Right? And so we kind of brush it off. Right? We just delete it or we generalize this, it's always this way, you're always like that, forget about it, right? And instead, it's like really saying, okay, maybe I can talk about this right a second, but let me just take a breath, okay? And let's talk about what the issue is at hand. And oftentimes the issue is at hand that you don't feel safe, that you feel in some way, shape or form, your boundaries have been violated, right? Like there's something where your values have been broken, right? Or you broke them yourself and you're projecting it onto your partner. So there's so many different ways, but the ability to be with that and oftentimes what comes out is the shame. You know, you have to be willing to be with the shame to be able to answer the question at hand, right? And so there's so many examples, you know, like why is it so important to you that you put the dishes in a dishwasher, right? Like answer that question. You don't say, I oh, forget about it. It's not important anyways. You don't really get it anyways, 
right? But just really answer the question, you know, just really say, you know, it just really makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like you care for me. It makes me feel supported. It makes me feel understood. It makes me feel cherished that I'm not just a maid, you know, to clean up for you, but that you actually like make sure that you respect me as well. You know, so like just really saying what's so and staying in that conversation. And last but certainly not least, example number five, yelling to stop the conversation. Oh boy. Okay. So that is definitely something for those of you who have a lot of fire, a lot of intensity, a lot of dynamism inside of yourself. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? You just know like, oh, I just need to raise my voice to a certain level and the conversation is over, right? Because you have so much intensity and you can just really like threaten that inner boy in the boy, in the man, right? So you come with your, with your wild woman and with the distorted wild woman and you just like destroy anything that's vulnerable in the man, right? And so, but the problem with that is there's like so many problems with that. For so one, you know, the trust is going down tremendously, you know, because the man will not open up his heart so easily and will step into the gentle part of him and the soft part and the compassionate part and the kind part, right? And so he will start to become a little bit more being on the defensive and become protective of himself, right? He may also, worst case scenario, even start walking on eggshells. And that's the worst thing that can happen to you because now the author authenticity in your relationship is actually dwindling, which is so bad for creating intimacy and connection and longevity in your relationship and with that of course also ongoing fulfillment and mutual respect but also what it does too it's like he really starts to put you in a different category you know like the, it's almost like the polarity starts to dissipate out of the sudden you become the masculine you become the dominant you become the driver you become the destructor right and so like he starts to go more and more into his feminine or ultimately, if he's masculine, right, he's going to leave you because he has no longer a place or you guys will just be arguing two men against each other, two masculine energies against each other, right? But you're not going to go anywhere. And guess what? You're not going to feel supported. You're not going to feel taken care of. You're not going to feel like respected at all. And you will be so sad when the polarity just dwindles. So those were the five examples, the stonewalling examples, how to stop stonewalling in relationships. So if you're like, gosh, this is really interesting, Auntie. And honestly, first I was like, hmm, am I, is this me? And then I found out, oh, there's actually a lot of examples that really speak to how I treat men sometimes. Then I invite you to come on a magnetize your man heart to heart chat with me where we get crystal clear. How can you stop this? What is the fear inside of yourself? What is that internal dialogue inside of yourself that really has you sort of like break this connection and that intimacy and that trust with your man that you're actually dating? So for that, hop on over to magnetizeyourman.com. Grab a slot as long as they last. Or you can also click the link right below this video to find a slot to chat with me as well. I hope this video was helpful for you. It certainly opened some eyes for me. Again, looking forward to talking to you very soon. I'm Antje Boyd. Much love. Mwah!